Alright guys, what's going on? It is good to see you. I hope everybody's out there staying high speed, accomplishing their goals, whatever they may be. So I literally just got done about an hour ago with my Jump Master School graduation, which was awesome by the way. It was a really good turnout. Tons of people showed up. My family showed up. It was, it was awesome. It was great. One of my uh, good long-term buddies that I've known in the Army for a long time got me my, uh, my Jump Master knife. And also my first Jumpmaster band. So now I don't have to go out and get one myself. I'm super excited. I am a real Jumpmaster now. And Jumpmaster School is really something that I had been wanting to go out and pursue for a really long time now. You know, I've been in the Army for over 17 years now. And so really it's been a long time coming that I finally went and finished Jumpmaster School. And this was the first time I ever attempted. And it was almost going to be not the last time. And that's because I'll be honest with you and upfront, Jump Master School is no joke. I'm not gonna go ahead and say it was the hardest school I've ever been to, but it was definitely up there, um, probably in the top five for sure. I'm gonna sit down and think about it. Now, if you've been following this channel, you will know that I took like almost a month long break from YouTube and making content because I was putting forth maximum concentration to Jump Master School. And that's really what it takes if you wanna be successful in that course. But now I'm excited uh, because first of all, I get to get back out to you guys and also, um, I get to share with you a little bit about the experience and hopefully um, share some insights and some knowledge that I was able to gain in the school myself and hopefully make you more successful if this is something you wanna go out and do in your career. So while everything's fresh in my mind, I'm literally just getting back from graduation, like I said, um, I wanna go ahead and talk a little bit about um, the different aspects of Jumpmaster School, what you can expect if you ever go, and uh, also just try to give you some advice and, and lessons learned that I had to go through myself that'll hopefully help you out um, as you make your way through the course yourself. All right, so first of all, let's talk about the no shit requirements to even get into the school. All right, I'm gonna read off the requirements so that I don't miss anything from the Fort Moore website, all right, because that is the main Jumpmaster school. So these are the prerequisites uh, to even go to the school. All students must be qualified, current, jump within six months, and maintain current throughout the course as a parachutist and have a minimum of 12 static line parachute jumps out of a paratroop door of a U.S. Air Force high-performance aircraft and be on jump status for at least 12 months. These months do not have to be consecutive. Applicants must have a reach of at least 84 inches to properly conduct a door check during PWAC. Applicants must be recommended by the first lieutenant colonel in their chain of command. Rank requirements, if you're an officer, you have to be between a uh, second lieutenant and a major. For warrant officers, it's between warrant officer one and chief warrant officer three. And for army enlisted, it's between sergeant and master sergeant. And those rank requirements and basic requirements are really gonna be all uh, transferable to other services, i.e. the Air Force, Marines, wherever you're coming from, you're trying to get into Jump Master, you're just gonna have to meet the same prerequisites as us army guys do. But that's not too bad as far as prerequisites go to get into the course, right? You know, really, if you're on jump status for a good year or two, you should have met those criteria by the time you're getting ready to go to jump master school. Now, there are three different jump master schools in the Army uh, that I'm aware of, three main jump master schools that you could go to, either the Fort Moore uh, jump master school or previously Fort Benning, right? That's really the main jump master course. And then there's two at Fort Bragg. There's one that's run by the 82nd Airborne. They call it the 82nd Airborne Advanced Airborne School, but it's the Jump Master course. And then there's also one that USASOC runs, and it's either run by uh, Special Forces, PSYOP, or uh, Civil Affairs guys whenever they decide to put a course on. All three of them are legit Jump Master schools. The biggest differences between them really is the one at uh, Fort Moore and the 82nd Airborne Jump Master course. Those are gonna be more geared towards your conventional you know, once they become jump masters, they can perform jump master duties in conventional units, but not USASOC units. And it's vice versa for the USASOC jump master school. If you become a USASOC jump master certified individual, then you can be a jump master in USASOC airborne operations, but you cannot do it uh, for a conventional unit unless you attend a refresher. Besides that, uh, some big differences between the soft jump master and the conventional jump master courses is the conventional jump master courses you will have to memorize the entirety of pre-jump and that takes a lot of work that's that's a big difference in, in the uh, soft course you don't have to do that you'll still have to read the pre-jump off to make sure that you can project your voice uh, appropriately but you don't have to commit it to memory but with the use of soft course you have to take a dzso exam so you'll get a lot more hands-on training for dz ops and how to run successfully a uh, drop zone but then you're also expected to 
score a 70% or higher on the DZSO exam. But besides that, from my own understanding and from my own research, I don't think there's any other major differences between the three courses. Those are gonna be like the big differences. So those are just some things to be aware of uh, depending on your unit, uh, where you're located, or who you know you're gonna be supporting as a jump master once you do become qualified, inshallah. Jump Master School in its entirety is anywhere between three to four weeks long, just depending on the course, depending on if there's holidays during your schedule, this, that, and the other, but it's anywhere between three and four weeks long. And your days are also gonna be packed full of information and hands-on learning. There's no short days, they're all early days, and that's not even counting study hall days where I went in on days during the weekends. I did have a four-day holiday, but I went in on one of those days. So I wouldn't make any other plans during your time at Jumpmaster School. With that being said, I would also make sure that you are able to put yourself into a completely Jumpmaster mode of focus during the entire time you're there. Because if you are already struggling with any other sort of life circumstance or financial problems, um, or you have other things that you're studying for on the side, it's gonna be really hard to get through this course, okay? You wanna be able to put yourself in a situation where you can really just focus on getting through Jump Master School. So now I'm gonna get into the different categories of Jump Master School and then talk a little bit about what I learned during them, hopefully give you guys some tips on each category and basically just give you some insight, all right? So first of all, you have to earn your white slip before you even get a slot to be welcomed into the door of Jump Master School. What's the white slip? Now to earn your white slip, you have to pass the rig X, okay? That's rigging up your um, combat equipment, which is gonna be your rucksack and the MAW-C, the Modular Airborne Weapons Case. You have to be able to rig those appropriately with zero deficiencies within 15 minutes. And they're very strict on this. There is no give here. If you don't do it to standard, you're done. Immediately after the rig X, you'll go into your first nomenclature exam. Traditionally, it's only 25 questions long. I've also heard that sometimes it's 50 questions, but you can expect anywhere between 25 to 50 questions on the first white slip nomenclature exam, okay? So make sure you're studying your nomenclature. I would highly advise that you check out the Jumpmaster app. It's a really good resource, really for the whole course, especially when it comes to nomenclature because they have flashcards for you that go through each item on the nomenclature that you can study at your leisure. I would also advise that you start studying and practicing your rig X at least two weeks out. If you, if you cut it any shorter than that, you're really not doing yourself any good. On that nomenclature exam, you have to score at least a 70% or higher, um, and then you earn your white slip. And once you have your white slip, that's your ticket into the door at Jump Master School. Day one, they're gonna go hard and fast on you, all right? They're, they're gonna start, you'll be drinking from the fire hose, as we say. They're gonna start teaching you general knowledge studies, and you'll be expected to retain, take notes, gather your study materials, make sure you're studying on the side because you're gonna have a general studies exam most likely within that first week. So even though it's day one and they're getting, they're just shoving all this material down your throat, it's all super important and you have to be taking notes, you have to make sure that you understand it because you're not gonna have a whole lot of time to really focus on those studies because you're gonna move straight into JMPI day two or day three. Day one or day two, depending on your jump master course that you so choose to go and attend, you're gonna be taking a full length nomenclature exam. So it's another nomenclature exam, it's just gonna be anywhere between 50 to 100 questions now. So you don't forget your nomenclature even though you've earned your white slip. And you're gonna to need to know your nomenclature throughout the entire course, okay? So just keep studying up on it. Make sure you know all the nomenclature that you're expecting to know as a jump master. Now at this point, I wanna bring another thing up. Some jump master schools, I'm not really sure between which ones, but some jump master schools have have what's called re-entry for JMPI. And that is basically they, they will give you two additional attempts to pass your JMPI exam if you maintain an 80% or higher on everything else before it comes time to actually test your skills at JMPI. Normally you only get three chances and that includes the pretest. And from what I understand, nobody ever passes the pretest. In my class, nobody passed the pretest exam. It was miserable. And then you'd get two additional chances after that. But with your Reentry, you would get two additional chances after those additional two chances. So you'd get a total of five chances, including your pre JMPI exam. So if you find yourself in that course, I can tell you for a fact you want to prioritize your reentries, okay? Because you're going to need them. There's a good chance you're going to need them. And, and that 80% stems from the nomenclature exam and the general studies exam and also your admin points. They will be keeping track of admin points throughout the entirety of the course. You can lose admin points for being late, uh, falling asleep in class, silly things like that. Or when you're getting into your JMPI, if you create deficiencies, uh, you don't put them into JMPI 
configuration correctly, you don't rig your buddy correctly, little things like that, you pop a main or a reserve, those are big no-gos. As soon as you dip below that 80% on admin points, you no longer get your re-entry. As soon as you dip below 70% on admin points, you're done and you're kicked from the course. And it's not hard to, for that to happen. If you pop a main, I believe it was negative 16 points. You can only do that once. And it's not hard to do it. I mean, you make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? If you're late, it's negative 16 points. There's a lot of ways where you could just be kicked out of the course in one day. All right, so take those admin points extremely seriously and you really do wanna score your best possible on those tests. And like I said, the first two tests are gonna be your nomenclature exam and your general knowledge exam. And I know I'm kind of all over the place right now, but that is how the Jumpmaster course is. You'll be doing a lot of different things at once. You'll be studying and learning a lot of different topics at the same time. And all of it is important for these exams. So like I said, you'll take your nomenclature test first. You'll get that out of the way. You'll score an 80% or better. You'll immediately go into JMPI. And later in the week, most likely, you'll take your general studies exam. So just throughout the whole first week, everything you're learning from those PowerPoints, retain it, take your notes, go home and study it for that first week. Day two for us, we went hard into JMPI. We went hard into circles. If you've never heard of circles before, if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's basically where you just, you line the whole class up into the room or the outside area, whatever you're using into a circular formation and you start practicing JMPI on each other and you'll eventually move from person to person to person throughout the circle um, where the other guy is wearing the parachute harness for the entire time, which sucks by the way, and you'll just, get better and better and better at JMPIing um, until eventually you hopefully meet the standard. And this takes days to do. JMPI is absolutely the hardest thing at Jump Master School. This is, this is really what you're gonna focus on the most during your time there. Now, why do circles suck so much? First of all, if you've never done JMPI before in your life, even if you've been a jumper and you've watched the Jump Masters do that to you, you really don't know what they're doing and you don't understand the sequence. They're gonna show you and walk you through the sequence exactly how it needs to be verbatim. And there can be no, I repeat, <laughs> no deficiencies in your sequence, no breaks in your sequence. Everything has to be 100% correct according to that readout. And you have to do it to a certain time standard which almost seems impossible. That's why it takes so much practice to get it done. So you'll first start learning just how to do the JMPI regardless of time. Every day you'll get faster and faster and faster. Eventually they'll integrate combat equipment into it and then eventually they'll start showing you deficiencies and you'll have to start learning on how to identify the deficiencies as you're making your way through the inspection and increasing your ability to do it within a certain time standard. And this is gonna take around two weeks of JMPI in circles. And these are long days. All day you'll either be the guy that's doing the JMPI sequence or you'll be standing there in a shoot getting JMPI'd. So you can expect to be very sweaty. You can expect to be having a very hurt back by the end of the day. Um, and your hands, your hands are gonna take a major beating, okay? I would definitely recommend that you get some uh, O'Keefe's hand uh, gel and also some uh, new skin and I'll put links down there in the description for you So you can see what I'm talking about and get some for yourself in preparation Definitely don't skimp on that get that stuff because you're gonna need it I promise you your hands are gonna take a beating your body's gonna take a beating and your mind's gonna take a beating because you're learning so much so fast and Honestly, it just feels almost like it's impossible But I promise you if you just keep your head up and you just work at it as hard as you possibly can You will pass JMPI Hopefully <laughs> So what's the standard they're looking for for JMPI? How do you pass the test? Well, the test, you've got to be able to JMPI three jumpers. The first one will be in combat equipment and the other two will be Hollywood. You can't miss any major deficiencies and there will be anywhere between three and five deficiencies on each jumper. And you can only miss two minors. Each minor is worth 11 points each and a major is worth 31 points. You have to be able to score a 70% or better on the test. Oh, and lastly, you have to be able to do this within five minutes or less. So the time standards you're really shooting for is two minutes with combat equipment and one minute and 30 seconds for each Hollywood jumper that will bring you to a five minute time standard. And during the test, they'll separate you and put you in a room with some um, you know, some studs from another course, some volunteers or, or somebody from some other unit that will be in the parachute. So these won't be guys that you've been working with, they're just randoms. They will have you walk in with your back facing the jumpers, so you do not get to see the jumpers at all. They will read to you the standards, ask you if you understand, and they will show you a stopwatch. 
and it's on you. As soon as you turn around and start your JMPI sequence, you've got five minutes to complete it with zero major deficiencies and no more than two minors. And that's it. This is you in a solitary room with three random jumpers and two Jumpmaster instructors who will be watching every little tiny movement you do during that JMPI sequence. And if you screw one little thing up, your thumb gets in the way, you mask the static line, you're out of sequence, maybe your eyes wander off a little bit, you're done, Jumpmaster. I didn't actually pass JMPI until my very last chance. Thank God I passed it. I definitely felt the most confident with my last shot, so luckily that worked out for me. One of the other tests, you know, I. I broke sequence technically. Um, I let my eyes stray because I, I thought that there was a, a bolt end exposed on the helmet. I wasn't super sure if it was or not and I had already uh, inspected it. So by the time I got down to the chest strap, at, at the last point of the chest strap, I took another glance up at the uh, bolt end exposed just to make sure if it was or not because I wasn't sure. And just because I took that second look and double check that is technically breaking sequence. So since I did that, Jumpmaster called it, I was done. That was, I, I failed that test. It's that easy to fail. <laughs> On another test, I just missed something dumb. It was a uh, twisted riser, which sounds really bad because it's something that's really easy to, to spot. Um, but I just, you know, I don't have a good excuse. I just missed it. And, uh, you know, that, that test session didn't work out for me. <laughs> but like I said, thank God, last test on my last try, I gotta go. And I moved on. And I have, and there's no shame in my game. I think if you're able to get JMPI, it doesn't matter how many tests it took you, as long as you get to move on and finish out the course, you're good to go, Jump Master. And hopefully I hit up enough. If you guys have any more questions on that topic on JMPI at Jump Master School, just drop them in the comments. Or if you have any insight or advice that you want to offer, if you're watching this video and you've been there before, please drop that in the comments for others to see. Uh, also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're liking this content that I'm pushing out to you so far. It really does help the channel. I appreciate it. Anyway, so you'll be done with JMPI and more than likely anywhere around 50% of the class will have failed by now. But you passed, so you're super happy and giddy about it and you feel like you're just invincible to everything now, but there's still one more thing you gotta get through and that's PWAC, which is practical work in the aircraft. Now PWAC was something I really enjoyed. To me, that's what it really meant. When I thought of Jump Master School, I was thinking of like PWAC, right? Like actions in the aircraft, you know, giving out your jump commands, getting, getting the jumpers hooked up and ready to go and pushing them out the door. You know, that's what a Jump Master does, right? So I was really excited for PWAC. Um, I had a really good time learning PWAC um, and I thought that I executed it well. I got a go on the first shot and it went really well for me. Let's talk a little bit about how that goes so you guys have a little insight. So they'll assign you a PWAC buddy and you'll get, I think, anywhere between two to three days to practice your PWAC sequence. And that's gonna be your jump commands um, and how to inspect the door and how to actually initiate the jump itself. And this is another thing where you have to get the sequence, everything just right, verbatim. You can't have any major safety violations or you're just done, you didn't pass. Safety violations, include a lot of different things that you might not think would be normally typically considered a safety violation. That's things like moving up your heel uh, at the door while you're doing your air safety checks, not turning inside the aircraft towards the skin of the aircraft, not keeping good handle on your static line, failing to trace the door properly, okay? It gets very windy up there, especially if you don't have a wind deflector on the aircraft. When you're tracing the door, you have to trace the door all the way up and all the way down with your palm of your hand, tracing every single centimeter of that door. So there's a lot of small details that you have to get right or you will fail your first attempt at PWAC. But like I said, you and your partner will have two or three days, possibly a weekend in there to practice your PWAC because you'll be doing it together. One of you will be assigned as the primary Jump master, or one of you will be assigned as the assistant jump master, and that matters because the way you're practicing will depend on the door that you're actually at when you conduct your PWAC exam. So as long as you guys are syncing up well, you're practicing well, and you're depending on each other well to get this done, and you're confident in your own abilities to actually check for the safety of the door, because that's all on you at that point, you should be just fine with PWAC. But what I do want to say is don't think just because you're done with JMPI that you're gonna be good to go with PWAC because that is absolutely not the case. PWAC is still challenging. It is easier to pass in JMPI, but there's still plenty of ways where you can fail. Maintain your confidence, keep taking it seriously. And the biggest thing I can say with PWAC is just take your time. There is no real 
time standard, okay? You're gonna get there, you're gonna get excited, you're gonna be motivated, you're gonna wanna go fast through all the jump commands and through your safety checks and you're gonna miss something. But if you just take your time, give your jump commands in a nice, easy sequence, get to your safety check procedures and just look at everything before you touch it, take all the time you need because it's all, it's okay. There's no rush. You know, you never want to sacrifice safety is what they tell you the entire time you're a jump master course. What's the number one thing uh, for jump masters? Never sacrifice safety. Okay. Well, this is that time where you need to really remember that. And if you do that, you'll be just fine. You'll have a great PWAC um, exam and you'll enjoy yourself. After that, depending on the course you go to, you still have to take your DSO exam, uh, which is really, you know, it's, it's a lot of math and there's definitely some more information that pertains specifically to DZ operations and what it is to be a DZSO that you'll have to study at least a few nights before you actually take the exam. I wouldn't recommend trying to cram everything for the DZSO exam the night before because it's just a lot of information. And how much would it suck if you got through everything that is Jump Master School and it's the DZSO exam that gets you. You don't want that. So just remain studious and keep up your studies even through PWAC and you'll be just fine for the DZSO exam. And I don't even really wanna stress you out too much with the DZSO exam because it's really just not something to stress about. It's just something you really do have to make sure you're studying so that you can choose the correct answers on the exam. And the math is not that hard. It's just some basic formulas that as long as you commit the formulas to memory, you'll be just fine with the test. Nothing to worry about. And that's Jump Master, guys. Uh, that is everything that I think that I can think off the top of my head right now that I could offer to you as somebody who has just now recently, you know, 25th of May, 2023, graduated Jump Master. And I'm super happy I finally did this. I'm super pumped up to actually pull duties and, and do this job. And honestly, the last piece of advice that I want to offer to you is that if you are looking at going to Jump Master School and that's something you want to be able to do in your career, it's something you wanna check off, uh, you actually want to be a Jump Master, go and do it sooner than later because there is a good chance that you will fail the school and have to go back again. You know, there's just a lot of ways you can fail this school and um, there's no shame in that, but it just means you're gonna to have to go back and it's gonna take you a little bit more time to get this done. So I would not wait on it. I would go as soon as you're possibly able to so that you can maximize the potential of you actually getting through it and having enough time to actually graduate from the course and be a jump master. I wouldn't wait on it. I personally, my career has been a little bit all over the place. So I just kind of like, I wasn't always in an airborne unit all the time. So I just kind of bounced back and forth and finally got my opportunity to go to, go to Jump Master School. And I'm really glad that I did it. But you know, as somebody that's 17 years in, that, that took a long time. I wouldn't recommend doing it that way. I would recommend doing it as soon as you possibly can. And that way, you know, you can earn your star, you can earn your wreath, and you can just be the best Jump Master you can possibly be because you'll have plenty of time in your career to pull those duties and actually do the job. You know what I'm saying? Overall though, great experience. I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I grew from it, I'm a better soldier now, and I get to be a jump master. I remind you guys, if you have any other information yourselves, any advice that you wanna put out to the community, please do so in the comments. You know, the more information we get on this channel, the better it's gonna be for everybody out there that's trying to receive some good information, all right? So please don't forget to do that if you do have anything to say. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We talk about all sorts of things on this channel. Everything that is military, fitness, career enhancement, all sorts of things. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Here's some other videos from the channel that I'm sure if you go ahead and give a watch, you'll get some good information from them. Besides that, I've got nothing else for you, and I'll see you on the next one.